Good morning, Colonel Vaughn. It's Friday, May 11th. It's day three. I'm Nora. And I'm Jim Gibb. And here are your morning announcements. A course change request form is now available on the CV website. Not all requests are possible, so get your forms in soon. The Red Dress Project is a campaign to raise awareness for missing and murdered Indigenous women in Canada. Stop by the library and the atrium on May 16th to see the red dresses hanging and what they represent. A reminder that you should not be sitting on calf tables. It can be dangerous. A reminder that the weather is getting warmer, so dress appropriately, and if you're biking to school, make sure you aren't blocking any exits when you lock them up on the fence. Next week is Taco Week. Each day the calf will feature a different style of taco, as well as Frazies and Menchie's frozen yogurt. The calf will be also featuring smoothies and milkshakes, so be sure to come on down. Join us on May 17th for an escape room fundraiser hosted by Unlocked Ottawa. Teams of 6 to 8 are invited, tickets are $10, and will be sold in the atrium until the 15th. Students looking for volunteer opportunities over the summer should take a look at Star Gymnastics. More information is available on the board outside of guidance. For those interested in skiing in the Canadian Rockies next year, please hand in your letter of intent to Mr. Virgo by May 18th. It's now time to recreate old baby photos. Please submit the original and the recreation to the email below. The deadline is May 29th. That's it from us today, CB. Have a fulfilling Friday. Hey, Colonel Vi, we're here at the paramedics headquarters and we're going to go save some lives. So this paramedic headquarters was opened in 2005. Uh, the city took over the paramedic services in 2001 and uh, they started looking on a uh, permanent facility, which, uh, which is this one on uh, Don Reed Drive near uh, Walkley and Aaron. Uh, it was opened in 2005. It's uh, LEED certified, which means that it's uh, certified like a green building, if you wish. Um, our dispatch center uh, opened in 2009 when the city uh, took it over. It basically hunt, uh, handles uh, about 172,000 calls a year in uh, eastern Ontario. That's basically an emergency call every three minutes. So we are in charge of uh, restocking the ambulance, uh, cleaning the ambulance. Um, so basically at the end of the shift, the paramedics will drop off their units in the back. Uh, we'll have a guy assigned, he'll do the circle check, make sure that uh, the vehicle is in good working condition. Then we'll bring him to the second stage where uh, two guys will be in charge of fitting up the vehicle with everything that's been open bag-wise, uh, equipment that's been missing in the vehicle that they use on the road. Uh, our job is to restock and uh, make sure that everything's good for the next available shift. Okay, so this is Max and Max is a certified therapy dog. In between my times doing calls, I go into uh, hospitals. I'll also go into bases and visit medics and sometimes during calls, if it's not an emergency, back to the hospital. The paramedics will come and just pet them while they're on duty. Police also come and pet them and also firefighters, right, when I'm on, on duty. So for day-to-day -day stresses that we have, he just is like a nice break during your day to decompress, pet the dog. So this is our uh, stretcher loading system. This is where we're normally gonna take on uh, every call. So we have our stretcher, we have our oxygen here. Uh, this kit here contain uh, most of our medication, uh, some first aid supplies, is a our cardiac monitor. It's used to uh, assess the heart rhythm. We can diagnose heart attack. We can assess the amount of carbon monoxide in the blood. We can access, assess the amount of carbon dioxide in the breath. So this is the emergency support unit. Uh, it's basically a big logistical truck that's there to carry extra equipment uh, and as well as a small command center to um, large-scale events. So if you would have a plane crash or a high-rise fire and there's a need for a lot of equipment, this unit would be deployed to the scene. So they carry, give or take, the equivalent of about eight ambulance worth of equipment. So uh, these cars are a paramedic response unit. Uh, so they're a vehicle that are non-transport non capable. They will be placed in between two ambulances uh, to kind of bridge the gap in between two ambulance stations. Uh, so they will respond to uh, high priority calls and they're going to be there to make sure the paramedic get there as soon as possible. All right, so uh, this is our Bobcat the ATV ambulances. So uh, they are used for a search and rescue operation. So they will deploy if somebody gets lost or gets injured on a trail. They're also going to be uh, deployed on the Rideau Canal in the winter to go get uh, injured skaters and get them back to the transport ambulances. So these are our supervisor vehicles. They're used by uh, operations superintendent, also public information superintendent, uh, to use to respond to call, to uh, supervise paramedic, provide um, more resources on scene, and 
a level of supervision on uh, larger events. So the uh, treatment and rehab unit is mainly used uh, to support operation in large-scale events or um, long-term emergency response, like you would see in special event, working fires. You know, it basically all allows us to work um, shielded from the environment. I, I think it's probably pretty empowering, I think, to be a female in this profession because uh, for, like, I'm speaking to 20, 30 years ago, uh, it was primarily a male profession. Uh, so I think women have really paved the way when it comes to being here. And I think we're not quite 50-50 in the service, but uh, we have a, a really large workforce now of females. This is the greatest job in the world, by no doubt. I would uh, do it a hundred times over. Uh, it's a job that's very qualifying, uh, that's really gratifying, sorry. Uh, but it's also a job that takes part of you away. It will change who you are based on uh, what you're going to see, what you're going to hear. Um, it can really affect your mental health, that's for sure. You're going to miss Christmas, you're going to miss your kid's birthday. But uh, in the end, it's uh, one of the greatest jobs in the world. Really, you get to help people. Um, you have to see people probably on their worst day in their lives. But to try to be there and accompany them through, uh, through these tough times and get to save their lives, it's, uh, it's very gratifying. We had a wonderful time with the paramedics today. Thank you to everyone who helped out and thank you so much to all the hard workers that save lives every single day.